Hey, everybody. Thank you so much for joining us today at RIG Podcast. Respect, humility, and empathy. Those are the three values we talk about over and over and over. You know, what I was thinking just the other day that uh, maybe Parallax might have been a better title for this podcast. And what that is, is, you know, sometimes scientists want to see how far they are and from another star. And what they do, the astronomers, is that they take a picture of the Earth at, at one point, And then six months later, they take another picture of it. And they see the shift in the star and they're somehow able to use trigonometry to understand the shift. And so this is what we're trying to do. We're just trying to see things from different perspectives. This is not a debate channel. But with that being said, uh, I've got a very special guest today, Oz. Uh, can you introduce yourself, Oz? First and foremost, uh, thanks for having me. Uh, Absolutely. I love, uh, I love to have great conversations, uh, whether people uh, agree uh, worldviews, uh, religious views, political views. Um, I think it's I think it's important that we can have yeah. respectful dialogue. Absolutely. Um, Absolutely. Uh, so first and foremost, thank you for that. And uh, my name is Oz. I am from um, the Atheist Network Group of, well, I, I say formally known as the Atheist Roundtable uh, or TART, uh, but it's still part of it. So uh, Tang is the network group. Uh, we've created a, a network of shows. So we have one show, at least one show every day of the week. Wow. Uh, and uh, the Atheist Roundtable, or TAR, is the flagship program, and it either has one-on-one -on -one interviews with uh, theists, uh, or it is a uh, like a, um, a formatted debate, and, and uh, we, have, uh, we have that. And, and, and our debates are uh, they're, they're fun because we take we do take it serious, where there there is information being exchanged, you know, and all of us can learn uh, from that. But we also understand that we're on YouTube, and there needs to be an entertainment factor. You know, yeah. and uh, so we've created kind of this uh, UFC boxing type fight night. And in between each round, uh, the debaters and the mod, or we call a ref, uh, is removed from the screen. And then, you know, myself and whoever the co-host is, we come on screen and we give like analysis on mm. what we saw, what we heard. Uh, and then maybe plug some things coming up, uh, you know, for our channel or other people's mm -hmm. channels. Mm -hmm. And then we get back to the action. You know, oh, awesome. and, uh, so we keep it, uh, we keep it fun and lighthearted, but also, like I said, educational um, at mm -hmm. the same time. And uh, we also have uh, shows during the week that are uh, satirical based, you know, and have atheist undertones, but it's not at all focused on, you know, atheism or skepticism. It, it's mm -hmm. just, you know, comedy driven, you know, mm -hmm. real life, you know, uh, having fun and enjoying it. So uh, we, we just started that, uh, I'd say about a month ago, um, launched the, the network part of it, but that's a, uh, that's what we can do. If you want to know more, it's tart.live is our website yeah. and everything is there. We will put all your links um, in this in this channel. Um, that sounds like something I'd want to be a part of, though. I'm just not a debater. You know, like that's not my style. Take this for what it is. Um, if I met someone who had lived over, who lived, um, say, on Mars or something, and they came back to uh, the Earth, I'd have a lot of questions for them, <laughs> you know. Um, I, I, I wouldn't want to sit around and debate them. So for me, I've lived overseas for 10 years now. And so I have a different perspective. And so um, it's not better. It's not better. It's not worse. It's I just like exchanging ideas. So I've lived, you know, in Asia for 10 years. So the way that my thinking is, is just so drastically different than where I was whenever I was uh, just in America. So I've learned from the Asian people, you know, I've learned from people all walks of life. I've learned from homeless people. I've learned from starving kids in, in, in Haiti. So I've learned life lessons there that uh, I like to share with people. And yeah, uh, that being said, so I do want to preface a couple of things. First of all, thank you very much for coming on uh, this channel. Really, really, really appreciate it. Uh, we had met in another form and uh, before I even got on, I was listening to you and I was like, wow, Oz, you're really good, man. Like, I, I really enjoy that level-headed critique of, Christ of Christianity that you were giving because I am a Christian, but I probably am more critical about Christian and Christianity than probably you or most atheists are. So uh, I can expect, respect it and appreciate it. Uh, that being said, you were, uh, with, with one glaring exception, you were tremendously respectful and um, I really appreciate that because some people were calling me some pretty bad stuff in the comment section. And the guy who, 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 who I had on basically misrepresented everything that I said. And so it took everything I said out of context. So 
because of that reason, I'm debating even whether or not I should release it or just kind of wash my hands from it. But, you know, I don't I don't think we're going to have that kind of talk today. So I do have some questions, though, about your channel and about your walk. And uh, if you're ready, let's let's get right in. Let's chop it up, brother. OK, so. Uh, okay, so a couple of questions. Uh, you, you said you're calling. Uh, are you from New York or Jersey? Where are you from? Nope, I'm. I'm a. Uh, I'm a Hoosier. I'm from Indiana. Mm. My sister actually went to law school in Valparaiso. I know, so, right? With <laughs> so I went to. I went to Bible college, and I want to tell you a little bit about, about my background story. Um, you'll uh, you'll understand why I'm so critical about Christians. But so I went to Bible college in missouri and so she was in valparaiso so we used to meet up in chicago a lot right uh you like chicago i love chicago okay so i see you wearing a falcon hat uh please tell me you like the bulls um i i i'm not from atlanta i actually i, I took a trip down to atlanta uh we were hosting and uh streaming uh debates down there and i bought an outfit and this matched the outfit <laughs> all right all right Who, so do you have a basketball team uh, Boston Celtics. The reason why I, I just do not prefer a debate style is because I took a trip over to Kosovo, right? And in Kosovo, they have the most unique city that I've ever seen in my life. And my friend is Serbian, right? So the guy from the the, the guy from uh, California, Serbian. So if you go to this place called Mitrovica, half of the city is Bosnia. Well, not no Serbia. Half the city is Serbia. And half the city is Kosovo. And they had this whole bloody thing that went down there, uh, I think, in the, the 90s. And, yeah, it got ugly. So, basically, you can cross one bridge. Like, seriously. And it's a totally different city. And they have, like, spray painting on the wall. And what they did was they, they took all this concrete and all these tires and stuff. And they threw it on this bridge so that you cannot cross the bridge. And I symbolically crossed it because I wanted to walk over to the other side and, and see. And, and basically the craziest things, Oz, is that these people were culturally like just alike. This is the same way as like Mexicans from gangs and stuff are just alike. And they just happen to be born just a little bit further from each other and they want to kill each other. You know, to me, that is so mind blowing. I, I've had 10 of my friends murdered um, from gangs and drugs and stuff on the street. So my idea is I prefer building uh, bridges and um, I prefer building those over walls, actually. So this is a uh, thank you for your contributions here. So, OK, so first of all, I want to ask you a little bit about your spiritual journey. Um, and what age did you wind up uh, going into the atheism realm? So, so I, I grew well, I was born. I was born into, um, I, I guess you would say, the uh, the radical or extreme uh, version of Christianity, which which would be the evangelical, evangelical yeah, evangelical, charismatic, you know, non-denominational. And uh, at the earliest age, that's all I remember. Uh, my mom was a praise and worship pastor, wow. and uh, like the only things that I have memories of, uh, as far as young, the youngest age that I can go back to, is either being in church uh -huh. or uh, being on a baseball field. I was an all-state baseball player. Oh uh, wow, I wow! Loved baseball. Uh, so those those are the earliest things you know that uh, that I remember, and you know to to not take a a whole hour you know walking walking through my uh, life story because you know I too have been through uh, been through the mud you know and had to crawl out of the mud, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. uh, there there was a a lot of abuse growing up. Uh, yeah, we, we, had, yeah. we had the um, we we had the 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 cookie cutter like white picket fence. Uh, family from look from the outside. Oh God, you know, sorry. And, and oh you know, God, the, sorry. I people, uh, the people, oh, you're good. Uh, the the people looking in, you know, oh this family, you know, it's a beautiful family. Look, look at mom and dad. Look at the boys. You know, because it's, it's just me, you know, just me and my brother growing up. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And uh, everything on the outside looked beautiful, but if you got uh, you, even a little peek. Um, you know, within the four walls uh, of our home, uh, the amount of dysfunction and abuse and uh, all of those things would probably make most people sick, you know? Um, mm -hmm, so, mm -hmm. so, so there was that. And then uh, finally, you know, uh, my dad used to put hands on me all the time. And there, once I got 
to a certain age where all of a sudden I was bigger than dad. He, there was a day he came at me for, for, for really a, a very minor, minor, uh, quote unquote offense. Uh-huh. And, and told me to go to his bedroom and tried to corner me like he always did. Uh-huh. And uh-huh. I remember looking at him. I was like, look, I'm, I'm done with this. And if you touch me, I'm going to knock you out. Really? Do not put your hands on me. And he went to put his hands on me and, and touched me. And, and he always did this thing where he took the, uh, the, the knuckle of his middle finger, he'd drive it into my chest. And as soon wow. as he did it, I hit him as hard as I could. And he flew back. Uh, we were in his, like I said, in his bedroom. And I hit him so hard, he literally flew back onto his bed. Wow. And my little he brother. He like he can punch. Oh, I, I, yeah, well, I try, I, after that, not at that time, but after that, I, I, I trained to fight. So, yeah, I, wow. I didn't know it. I didn't know it till later, but yeah, I can pack a punch. <laughs> yeah, I'm telling I wouldn't want to meet you in the back alley. That's for sure. Uh, and I didn't know it at the time, but my little brother w- was already on the phone calling my mom. My mom was at the church working because she, uh-huh. she was the praise and worship pastor, uh-huh. but also uh-huh. there full time. And she came, uh, our, our, our house kind of sit like on, on a, like a mild curve. Uh, and I remember hearing her tires squeal coming around the corner really? wow. because my brother had told her what had happened. And then she like pinned my dad against the wall. and was like, I'm sick of you doing this to me. I'm sick of this. I'm sick of you doing this to my son um, and told him to leave. Uh, and so he left. And when, when he left, she looked at me and she was like, all right, son, do we stay or do we go? And I was like, well, that, that's a you question. Like that's your that's your husband. Uh, but as far as I'm concerned, I'm out. I'm out. Whether he stays or goes, I'm gone. Like I, I want, I'm done with this. I'm not doing this anymore. Uh, so you know, so there there was you know a little bit of, little insight into that. Then that led to uh, I went ripping and running because it, and this had nothing to do with a lack of belief in a God. Uh, I was just so angry as a young man uh, that. It went to drug abuse, alcohol abuse, ripping and running, gang activity, uh, you know, robbing gas stations, rob, you know, breaking into houses, doing all this. And, and all of that was just out of hatred, you know, and, and hating my dad. Um, and even part of it, hating my mom because she, her drug was church. She used church to keep her away from the abuse and the torment, you know, um, and, and all those things. Uh and then when I was 21, 22 years old, uh, I had, I was on about a two week, uh, cocaine, uh, cocaine bender and, uh, drinking every night. And I don't remember the last time I ate or slept. And, uh, I, for some reason thought it was a great idea to, um, get behind a wheel and drive and, uh, was pulling onto a, uh, a freeway and it was going about 70 miles an hour and got T-boned by a dump truck and pushed up into like the concrete barriers, uh, uh, you know, on the highway. And, uh, because of that accident, I had basically every bone on the left side of my body, um, you know, broken or crushed or smashed. And they, they thought I had brain damage. Uh, they had to resuscitate me twice. Um, uh, my lung collapsed on the left side. Uh, like they call like it, it, it was horrendous. It was absolutely horrendous. And brain damage that explains the uh, the atheism. Yep. Well, no, I'm just well, kidding. Yeah. I'm talk- <laughs> no, no, I use comedy to try to break things up. You had me crying over, yeah. so I'm just. I, if, if I if I take a poop on you, just it's joking. No, I, I, you're you're good. I, I I'm I'm a satirical guy, so I, you're you're good. Uh, but what happened oh, was it's then, a very sad story. When um, it is it, it, it sucked. It, it all of that all of that sucked you know I, I remember finally when i gained consciousness uh i was in icu for several weeks and when i finally oh. gained consciousness that you know family and friends and everybody are up there and and, and when i look back at it now instead of really inquiring about how i feel and where i was at it was the only reason you're still here oz is because God has a plan for your life and he spared your life because there is a 
purpose. Well, being 21, 20 years old, or sorry, 21, 22 years old. And, uh, I was a brand new father, a brand new wow. husband, Wow! You know, all of that. It, it was, holy crap. Maybe these people are right. And, and I need to do this. So I just jumped two feet in no second thoughts. And as soon as I was released from the hospital and still up to this day, have never touched a foreign substance, you know, a legal substance since. Yeah. How, old are, how old are you now? 40. So 19 years. Wow. Jesus. Yep. Jesus H Christ. Wow. Um, Sorry, continue. By the way, you're only a year older than me. And funny, crazy enough, um, this is weird. I guess in Korea, they count the time that you're in the mother's womb. So apparently I'm 40 here as well. I prefer international age because I at least feel like uh, I'm not an old man now. But anyway, sorry, go ahead. I apologize for interrupting you. I did what I felt was the right thing. And that was jumping, you know, all the way in, you know, to, uh, to a God belief and a religion and faith. And, and, and when I say all the way in, like I started taking Bible classes, theology classes, uh, New Testament classes, uh, a couple of them that, that focused on Romans and saved by grace through faith, Wow! Uh, wow. you know, and, and really started to dig in. And I was like, you know, if, if this is it, if this is it. And, and the reason I'm, I, I got up, you know, because when I uh, rewind for a second, when I first woke up and gained consciousness, I, I freaked out because I couldn't move. I thought I was wow. paralyzed. Wow. Wow. Uh, because my bo my body was, there was so much pain. My body was in shock. So I literally couldn't, I couldn't move. And, and it, it was just that plead, you know, where if, if I can do this, like, uh, you know, screw all the drugs and all that. And, and I've been, like I said, uh, as far as, uh, you know, um, uh, drugs and illegal substances, I haven't touched one. In That's amazing. That's amazing. Um, and I, and, and at one point I had an eight ball a day habit. Like it, I, I wasn't a lightweight. I was getting it. You know, um, so I did that, I took, you know, I took the classes and, and uh, you know, my ex-wife, you know, uh, she was always so proud, so proud really? because, uh, because she would get up at 3 a.m. in the morning where, you know, a lot of the, a lot of her girlfriends at, you know, 2, 3 a.m. in the morning, their husbands were still out partying. Wow. You know, their husbands were still out doing that she would get up at 3 a.m. and come downstairs and I would be at the kitchen table with my Bible and my concordance and, you know, going through the scripture. And she was so proud, you know, that, uh, that's, that's the guy that she, that she married that, that came out of all of that, you know, BS. Uh, and, and, you know, and here he is. And, and I, and I did it. And, and that's why when, when people say, well, uh, you know, Oz, you, you probably just weren't saved. You weren't really a Christian. You didn't really believe uh, you, you can go talk to the people that really, really knew me on an intimate level. I, yeah. I, I, if that wasn't true belief, I don't, then, then I don't know if any of us know what true belief really I, is. So one thing that really annoys me is whenever you, no, no, not you, I'm just saying you, another person try to tell me what I believe, you know what I mean? So, or believed in the past. I mean, the bar guy said, you weren't an atheist. I'm like, how in the name of God would you know what I was? You know what I mean? I don't presume, I wouldn't presume to, to think one way or the other about that. I mean, I do have a de theology that basically says that, you know, if you, if you truly knew God, you wouldn't walk away from that. But that doesn't mean that you, 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 you weren't in the moment, like doing the best that you could, you know? And, and I and I do want to say uh, I do want to say this is extremely mass. Yeah, this is an extremely powerful story. So my parents are ministers, so I had very similar stuff going on, but just in the home of a minister. I mean, if I told you the first five years of my life, it would probably make you vomit. I mean, seriously. So I know I know the routes that you're talking about and things behind closed doors, right? So uh, that being said. Um, I, I love my mom to death. She died on my birthday uh, 13 years ago. And I think I might've mentioned that in the thing, like the last time I ever saw my, my mom, I told her I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. But the reason, why, the reason why I'm telling you that is because I went to Bible college to make my parents happy, you know? And, and, I, and I even got baptized in Bible college. It was total peer pressure slash, I guess you can have peer pressure. That's not the worst peer pressure I could think of, right? But it was like, had nothing to do with finding God. It was just a matter of 
you know, be, just trying to trying to get my mom's approval. And I told Barr this, I, I told Black Atheists, I said, look, because he's talking about his family. I said, look, dude, I have an incredible amount of respect for anyone who's who's willing to take that, who's willing to go against the grain and stand up against their family and say, I'll take the consequences. Because I was such a coward that I continue to preach. Um, I continue to, to go along with the lie because, you know, my mom told me, well, if you convert to Islam, uh, we're not going to have a relationship. You know, she flat out told me that if you were able to walk away, I got respect for that, you know, to, to be true to yourself. And that's what I'm interested in to hear. Uh, so please continue. As I served, uh, you know, this church that, that my mom was a music pastor at and my, uh -huh. my brother, my brother was a youth leader at, and I walk into this and not only to walk into it and I'm diving into it, but now looking back at it, I became the, the token Christian where it was, look at this guy. This guy comes from the bowels of hell. Yeah. He was a drug, yeah. Addict. He was a drug addict. He was a dope dealer. Um, he's involved in, you know, uh, gang activity and um, robberies and, uh, and all, all this, all this crap. And we're going to make him an example of what, of what can be, you know, and, uh, -huh. uh and I was like, well, you know, I, I didn't know no better. You know, at that point I was like, cool, you know, if I can help other people and, and that's still my heart today. Sure. And, sure. Sure. And then, you're amazing. I think you're amazing, bro. Thank you. I, I, I appreciate that. Uh, you're not very good now, looking, but you're, but you're definitely amazing. Oh, I'm, I'm, I'm ugly as you know. <laughs> uh, no, I'm sorry. Please continue. I should be insulting but, my guests, but I like you. Actually, I only insult people I really like, so that definitely means I like you. Yeah, but well, I'm not, I am not easy on the eyes. Like, <laughs> No, you're actually not that bad. All joking aside, you're not that bad. Like, so anyway, uh, please continue. Please continue. Yes, so and um, I'll try to speed this up a little bit. Uh, cause, cause I, it, I, it, 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 I'm I'm good. <laughs> I actually I prefer you to this movie detail. Don't don't rush for me. If I have to edit some stuff out, I mean I uh, just uh, I, I I'm digging this. I, this is why I'm just being back in the, just go 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 go. Uh, yeah. So I look back at it now. I was like, y'all yeah, were pimping me. Y'all were pimping me. You know, because uh, any any type of inner city uh, inner city outreach. Uh -huh, know, we go down uh -huh. the hood. We go down the hood. Guess, guess who they asked to speak. Uh, it, it wasn't the youth pastor. <laughs> it was. It wasn't my mom, the praise and worship pastor. It was. Hey, where, where's Oz? Where, where's, where's Oz? We need him to come uh -huh. down here. Um, you know, and and do this. Uh, and then eventually, my brother uh, made the move to Fort Wayne to uh, start his church, and then I moved. And at at that point, um, I had started to. Um, I, I had a couple bad, really, really bad experiences in, in, in that church uh, that I was doing all the, the taking the classes at and, and doing the research. And, and I, it's, it, again, it wasn't that I didn't believe in God. It wasn't a God thing. Um, I was just like really, really um, had, a, had a bad taste in my mouth for church. Wait, so was it, this dealing with the people or some kind of um, circumstance or do you not want to go down that? Um... Well, no, it, it was, it was the people in, in, in the, the pastor that uh promised me over because what well, two things at that point i had started a christian hip-hop group that started to blow up like we were we were opening up for uh like uh like, before they really took off like triple e lecrae the true uh the truth no, lecrae uh, yeah oh, ab absolutely you're uh, kidding me yeah hey dog there's no lying on this channel i gotta say that don't no, only tell the truth that's the only my only rule no, I'm just kidding. Go ahead. Continue, continue, continue. I have no reason to lie. <laughs> I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. I'm joking. Uh, I'm trying no, to. No, I'm so sorry. Sorry. Just so you know, this is an insanely crazy story. So I don't want to cry anymore on this topic. So if I use some comedy, uh, you've already made me cry once, bastard. <laughs> but if I do use some comedy, it's because we we do two things. Okay, so we do two things on this channel. One is we normally start off with some kind of icebreaker which so for instance yesterday we're talking about sports teams right with this guy um we sometimes talk about for example um you know it could be something just totally innocuous like uh music for example we might just go down the music route the, the music scene for a little bit and then two 
is we do some lightning. Well, we say so there's three things. The other thing we do is we do like a lightning um, opening just round. We ask you just a bunch of random stuff like the devil had a favorite band. Who would it be? And it's just some some of the stuff is ridiculous. Some of the stuff is, you know, a little bit more serious. But the third thing we do is try to use comedy as frequently as possible, because the last thing in the world, I mean, the last thing in the world I want to do is for you or anybody to be angry while listening to this and i get angry listening to a lot of stuff that christians say or that uh atheist like i get i got physically drained man i i literally if you would have seen me um during that whole little thing that was going on people were saying like i was sweating i was my energy level was completely zapped i mean i got really dehydrated uh, it's one of the reasons why i had to keep running off sc off screen because i was drinking so much water it, it was draining to me so um that being said um just go with the go with the comedy like it just i'm just trying to break this up because i don't want uh i don't want things ever to get too too it's serious but not too serious okay so please go on please continue yeah no and uh for your anybody once the the links are posted if you go watch our channel uh we have the same approach it, uh -huh. we, we, prefer, we prefer fun and comedy over, right 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 you know, right it being all serious all the time but uh so yeah we we, we had this hip-hop group and uh, there was about six of us, and uh, we we uh, and we 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 just start to hit our stride, and and uh, we were killing it. And and I remember the first show we did open up for a big act, um, uh, the Truth. If if you guys do or don't know who that is, uh, Manuel Lambert, uh, he was the first Christian hip hop artist to ever earn a Grammy. Uh, really? Yeah. Wow. And, wow. And uh, he he was the one that I looked up to. Like that that was the guy that I looked up to, and. And he's 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 a beast. he's still a beast, but uh, yeah, all these things started to happen, and and the the pastor of the church we were at was like, you know, um, I'm gonna help you, I'm gonna mentor you as far as uh, you know, understanding how to do the the booking and the finances and, and uh -huh. all this because you're gonna be a nonprofit, and it was just promise after promise after promise, and I got left hanging and hanging, dang, hanging, you know, and it, it was kind of like that deadbeat dad, you know that that. Yeah, I'll be there, son, but I'm not there. I'll be there, son, but I'm not there. You know, and you, you know, because even the Bible says it. Hope, hope deferred makes the heart sick, right? So when mm -hmm. you keep when you keep promising somebody, especially as young as I was, you keep promising somebody like that that has all this energy and all of this hope uh, and all this passion that you're going to help them. You're going to help them, but then every time you do that, you disappear and you mm -hmm. ghost. It's literally like a deadbeat dad, and and we all know this from the children that have deadbeat dads that do that. Guess what? Guess what happens? They get angry. Yeah, they get angry. Uh, they become bitter. They become resentful. Um, so, so quick question: um, Did you at all feel any kind of like repetition? Or maybe may, honestly, I, maybe this is a bad question to ask because you generally, genuinely cannot always psychologically um, in this in the, in the conscious like process all of these things right you're just getting frustrated and you're just so in the moment um, it, it's hard to I, I didn't fully process stuff till oh God since I, till I was honestly about 30 years old and I had to get professional counseling and I uh, did a lot of journaling and writing and stuff like that talking to people but did were you able to make any kind of connection between that and God and that and God and your own a biological father or or no um uh no and the reason i say no is, is because uh my biological father well, e even though the abuse was there i will say anytime that he told me something was going to happen it happened uh what do you so, mean by that so like uh me being an all-state baseball player uh-huh right? uh uh-huh uh -huh. Anytime he said, son, we're going to spend, spend the next two weeks in the batting cages working on this, guess what happened? We were in the batting cages the next two weeks working on that thing. Whereas what I was comparing it to with the, the pastor. Okay, he, okay, okay. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. I interesting enough, just a side note. Any chance you have seen the series, the – the mind of Aaron Hernandez. Absolutely. Okay. So I've probably seen that one about 10 times and I have read all the books on him and I'm looking to write a, a book on it myself, but I see some similar, I see some similarities between 
the, the dad pushing the sports thing, but also having like this violent side, you know? And for me, the reason why I'm probably not as dogmatic as most Christians, like, you know, you probably, I, and I'm going to say this, I'm just going to throw this out there. You seemed very unhappy with some of the responses that I was giving um, in, in the, in the form that we're in, but generally speaking, two things. If I feel like I have all of the answers, then I'm going to see that as some kind of sign, uh, some kind of strength to use as leverage over you or others. And it's going to reduce my humility. So the reason why we have respect, humility, and empathy in, in this title is because we want to, we want to see things from other people's perspective, right? We want to have respect for them. We don't want to assume the worst. I want to hear stories, your de deconversion. You know what I mean? I, I'm genuinely like interested if i wasn't interested i would i'd be like just get to this get to the meat and taters you know what i mean so i'm generally interested in this and for me for me having lived 10 years overseas and having gone to dozens of countries i know that i know absolutely nothing absolutely nothing i know that fact and so for me i'm just kind of like hey i had an experience with jesus christ I cannot fully explain it. People want to go in and say, well, why didn't God, why doesn't God speak to everyone? Why doesn't God, dude, like you want to go and ask the physicists all the, you know, all the questions that they can't answer in the universe. I mean, I have faith that maybe one day I might get some of the answers to the questions I have. But I, when I use the word faith and we, we kind of got into this a little bit about what actually faith means. It's like, I have confidence that one day I might have the answers to these questions that some of this stuff about Christianity, absolutely, and I'm gonna be like the first thing, man. Some of this stuff does not make sense at first value, at first glance. Some of it seems absolutely horrifically immoral. I get it. If you want to talk about the slavery issue, I mean, I I, I had to research and write a book uh, about that uh, in Haiti, you know. And I honestly think, I honestly think, um, I just want to. I'm gonna let you get back to your story, but I think I got so drained that people were referring to me as some kind of a racist or bigot. It, it was so degrading to me, honestly. I, I felt like ill afterwards, you know? I, I, I physically felt ill. For me, and th there's a reason why the title of the book is Remembering an Inconvenience, because there's been so much, there's been so much that has been deliberately erased from the history books about uh, Haiti and slavery. And the reason why, in, in context, is because there was a slave revolt in Haiti, and the Americans, uh, the Americans did not want the same level of, of slave revolt in America. So there was still slavery at the time, so there was a lot of belligerence and blockades that were done against Haiti, and so uh, so that it, to make sure that it wasn't successful. So I wanted to bring attention to all of this, and so I did the research to to talk about slavery and about the horrific effects that it continues to have. You know, not just that they happened hundreds of years ago is that these ripple effects continually are happening. So uh, that being said, I want to give, you know what I mean? Just want to take a look at the whole story. And uh, I'm sorry for that little rant. I'm, I'm honestly just still a little bit angry about that. This is why I'm not even sure if I want to release. Maybe I should release just to say this guy took everything I said completely out of context. You know what I mean? And that's not respectful. I, I, that's not that's not a respectful thing to do to someone. You know, I, I'm like, I want to see genuinely how you came to this conclusion. So so the reason why I mentioned uh, with Aaron Hernandez and why I'm, I'm writing the book about it is because um, if you take a look at that story and about how his homosexuality was uh, ridiculed and he was degraded by his own father, you know, you can understand why someone, why he would go down the rabbit hole that he did trying to hide. It. In fact, I'll tell you this, we got a gay NFL player, uh, Asara, Asara, Tuwalo, are you familiar with him? I'm not, but uh, but you uh, you sent me the name and the link. Uh, yeah, I, I, yes. I stopped watching football about four years ago. So well, I I don't watch it, but the, the, it's just amazing because he's been one of the few gays NFL players who have been open about it, and so uh, we have him coming on to just discuss it. And I'll be the first Sorry. to admit I don't agree with homosexuality myself, you know. But on the other hand, it's like I'm I will never support any kind of uh, degrading speech or trying to trying to pass laws to uh, discriminate against people. So uh, that's what? I'm sorry. That was the whole purpose of that. So, that we need to treat so, people with respect. Yeah, no, but, and, and not to not to to uh, skip over 
the, uh, the rest of what I was going to share, but why, why be, be, because you do, you do seem uh, like a, um, a caring, compassionate um, individual um, mm-hmm. through, through emails and even, even talking to you now, e- even when we were on screen and, and uh, maybe there's a point or two we disagreed on there. Mm-hmm. Uh, I would mm-hmm. say, I would say the totality of our conversation so far would, would equate to you and I being compassionate um, gentlemen. Yeah, you're awesome. You're awesome. Um, uh, and, and I would say the same uh, for you. It's 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 been it's been cordial. It's been you know respectful and awesome. Uh, why why do you um, why do you not agree with homosexuality? Well, it's it's when I think about this, uh, what it what it means to be a father. Um, for me, being a father, I became a father at the age of thirty six, and it was a life changing event. So I know lots of people. Um, okay, so our family we adopted about over 10 children into our home. And these people came from really broken homes. And so um, we, you know, we got a lot of sexual abuse, a lot of drug abuse, and just some really horrific, unbelievably horrific stuff that these uh, kids lived through. So for me, when I think about what is best for a child, it is to have a balance between a, a mother and a father and, and a loving environment. So I think if you have two, for instance, two, 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 two men or two women raising a child, one, you've removed uh, the, other, the other parent from the equation. Uh, two is that it will, in my opinion, I could be wrong. Um, this is my own opinion. It provides a balance, it, it, it throws off the balance that should naturally be there. Like, for example, a mother should be naturally more nurturing and a father should be, you know, more disciplinary. So I think whenever you mess up that equation, it's not good, in my opinion. It's the same thing. I would say the same exact thing with a transsexual. Like, if you are well, transsexual, well, yeah, go ahead. Well, let's, let's pause there real quick. Yeah. Uh, but because my pushback on that would be that not just in um and i'm gonna drill down to the united states because that's that's where christianity really has a stranglehold drill right? down what what was the last one christianity really has a stranglehold. no no i'm sorry before that before that i'm sorry i just want to make sure i understand you said you want um, to drill down what i want to drill down to the facts okay okay uh because because here here in the u.s uh folks because that's where uh, any compared to anywhere else in the world christianity has a stranglehold Mm-hmm. Um, on you know the country and uh, society and, and and the culture, uh, we have. I will. I, I will even just talk uh, within the secular um, environment. But just if we if we focus on the Christian population mm-hmm. in in the U.S., mm-hmm. they are at like a fifty two to fifty three percent divorce rate, and there is no psychologist. No psych, uh, uh, psych. Uh, um, I can't get the word out. Uh, uh, psych, Psychologist, uh, psychiatrist. Jesus, took me a second to get a psychiatrist, uh, or even a family counselor, counselor that that would agree that divorce is a good thing for mm-hmm. the children, nor mm-hmm. the parents. Mm-hmm. So when I hear that argument, um, as as far as we need to find this uh, balance between man and woman, uh, that it brings more stability to the household. Uh, I push back there because okay. we don't we we for over fifty percent of the time we don't have that anyway. So that that's sure, a really, sure, that's sure, a, that's sure, a really sure. argument. Sure. So and, and, and like like and I know this isn't a debate. This is just me yeah. pushing back on yeah. that and, and no, saying for for anybody that says that it, within you know if you live in America th- that that argument falls apart just on statistics. Okay. Well, I, first of all, I don't live in America, so um, well, I, I am I know. not entirely so much. I mean, I am. Don't I am concerned about what happens in America. I shouldn't say that. It's not my primary uh, interest. Uh, so I'm definitely not one of those MAGA America first, make America great again. I don't want to go too far on this because I would like to get back to yeah. your story. I would love to go down. I mean, if you want to go down the whole rabbit hole with this, because. I just, this is going to be the last point I'm going to say. So growing up sexually abused, I had some very unbelievably unhealthy stuff happen to me before the age of five years old. 
And if I were to tell you how that affected my um, self-image and self-worth, you really can't even put it into words. Um, I suffered from BID, which is Body Identity Integrity Disorder, which is a symptom that um, trans people suffer through. So being called a faggot and a freak and all those kind of things growing up, it naturally makes you empathetic um, towards people like that. My mother told me that um, uh, a parent's worst nightmare is for their child to be gay. And maybe she didn't mean this, but in my mind, well, the way I processed that was, it would be, be I'd be better dead than gay. So um, I don't want to go too far in this, except to say that um, I can empathize with people who are marginalized by society. And I don't, I'm not okay with no. that, you know? So no. I don't, I, I don't want to, I don't want to go any further on this though. Um, if you want to talk about this whole issue, I really would like to get back to your uh, topic. Yeah, it, it, absolutely. We can, if you want, we can do that. Uh, yeah. On, on another. On yeah. Another please, please, please get back to your story. I'm sorry. Yeah. As you can see, um, it's, I'm really passionate about some of this stuff, you know? So no, I, I, please, I was just, please. I was, I was, I was just getting ready to tell you Isaiah to, to stop apologizing uh, because <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry uh, for apologizing so much, but continue. It, well, well, no, I, no, I mean, I mean that from a, um, me being human and being empathetic and sympathetic, like don't apologize for how you feel. Don't, don't, don't apologize for what's happened to you. Uh, because that's, that's, and I tell, I tell my wife that, you know, um, my, my brother, that's a pastor now, um, was sexually, uh, molest and stuff in church. And I tell him, don't, don't, don't you ever apologize for that. Don't you ever apologize for that. Um, it sucks. It sucks, but it, it's, it's not your thing to apologize for. Um, so I, I just, uh, yeah. as a, as a person that does care about people, don't sure. you dare apologize. Don't you dare yeah. apologize. It's um, again, again, just, this is just why maybe you are, you and other people aren't happy with my non-dogmatic approach and my willingness to say, I don't know about a lot of things, but if I was so convinced about everything and I felt like I knew everything, I would see it as a way to attack people. And I do not use my faith to attack people. I use my faith to lift people up. That being said, please get back to, please get back yes. to your story. I'm, please. I'm sorry. I, please. I just wanted to make it clear that uh, when, I, when I said that, it was, it was actually me respecting you. And, and say don't don't you dare like try to own that you know you, you don't have to own that and apologize for it but uh yeah, yeah so so uh where i was at uh if we we fast forward I, you know i i, I finally uh got through that you know kind of it was one of those things where like time healed all wounds uh -huh, um uh -huh, uh -huh. and and my brother launched his church and he was like man I, I have nobody to run sound i have nothing will you come and do it will you come and run sound at, at my church he was he was launching the church at a little middle school wow. and i was still in that spot where it was like you know uh again like i didn't think god didn't exist uh i i just got to that place where because of the former pastor uh i was just bitter like who can i trust mm -hmm. all mm -hmm. these all people are telling me they want to help me and they love me but they always leave me stranded you know um that kind of thing and i was like all right bro i'll, I'll show up i'll show up and i'll do this because I love you, you're my brother, and I want to support you, and I want to do anything that I can do to, you know, to, to help, but go ahead. Is this your older brother or younger brother? Younger. Okay, please, I'm sorry, continue. Um, and uh, at, at that time, and I still am now, but I uh, was, was a smoker. Uh, I'd started smoking cigarettes again, uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, uh, and I told him, I said, I'm just going to tell you right now, I'm, I'm, I'm going to find out real quick what kind of Christians you got at your church. Because when I come uh, and put the, it, it was just on a folding table. I'm uh, on the folding table. I'm going to have the soundboard uh, and, you know, the, uh, the, the other things I need there. Uh, but right beside, right beside the soundboard, uh, I'm, I'm going to slap my uh, pack of Newports uh, right, right beside that soundboard. And, <laughs> You, you just you just you just go ahead and let them know 
<laughs> and let them oh, know. Oh, God. If that's they, hilarious. <laughs> if they say one damn word to me about them new pouts, uh, I will snap. I will snap. And uh, one of the guys, uh, was the, the, I think it was the second week, he went up to my brother. My brother told me this, this story like later on, but he was like, the dude came up to my brother. He was like, hey, uh, um, do you know that um, your brother has a pack of new ports oh, and a lighter right beside the sound oh, board my God. where everybody can see it? And and this is what I love because my brother knows me. Like I, I, I don't, I don't pull punches. There's no BS. Like it is you. What you see is what you get all mm-hmm. day, every day. Uh, and like he was that. like, he was like, oh, okay. You, you saw the new ports and you saw the letter. Um, I don't recommend this, but if you want to see what he has to say, go ahead and talk to him about it. <laughs> kind of like a challenge. It was like, like to talk I'm to giving you? Work. to talk to you. Yeah, like he told him, okay, like, okay. yeah, he's like, you, you probably don't want to do it, but but if if you fill up to the challenge, like, go and ask him about a cigarettes uh-huh, because uh-huh. he he probably knows more about that book and your relationship with your God than you do. Uh-huh. <laughs> so if you want to go bark up that tree, <laughs> go bark up that tree, <laughs> but it may fall on you. Just know when you bark up that tree, that tree <laughs> may fall on you. Um, and the guy never came to me, but, uh, anyway, fast forward the, the, uh, the more I was involved in uh-huh. my brother's church, the more of the community that I felt. And eventually I moved into the city at the time I was traveling two hours every weekend to help my brother launch his church. So um, it just, wait, where was this city? Look, where were you living at and where was the city at? So, uh, so my brother was launching uh, the church in Fort Wayne, Indiana, uh, which is far okay. uh, northeast um, uh, Indiana, and I was down in the like central part of uh, Indianapolis. Okay, okay, okay. Uh, okay. So it was it was a two hour drive every single mm-hmm. weekend, <laughs> and at the time I was a uh, regional sales director, so I was working at least sixty hours a week. Wow, you know, S- selling what? Uh, furniture. Okay. Okay. Um, so it, it was, it, it was a grind, man, to, you know, to do that. And then finally, I bet. Okay. yeah, finally my ex-wife and, and I and our family moved up, up here. And we got, you know, even more involved in, uh, became the full-time drummer. Uh, and, uh, I oversaw the small groups, uh, helped to oversee the youth group. I did all of the inner city you know, ministries or outreach, uh, that kind of thing. So, and, and in the midst of that, still studying and taking classes and doing all this, because it's like, I'm, you know, uh, everybody's prophesying and telling me I'm supposed to be a pastor, an apostle, or yada, 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 yada. Uh, then to, to cut, cut to the chase, there, there yeah, was a, I want to hear the, get, it, get into the taters, man. What now, happened? now we're going to get to the, now we're going to get the meat and taters. Yeah. Uh, and some cornbread. <laughs> There was a Sunday uh-huh. that, that happened, uh-huh. and I didn't have to. And that's why I made sure I laid out all of those responsibilities. Because anybody that's been involved in church, and you have all those responsibilities, it's, it's just uh-huh. It's uh-huh. Uh-huh. every day. Uh-huh. But there happened to be this weird Sunday where I uh-huh. didn't have to worry about drums, small group, youth group, yada, yada, yada. I did none of it, right? Uh-huh. And I just got to sit in the auditorium uh-huh. and listen and watch and observe. So they started playing the music. Uh-huh. And as a drummer, I'm used to just playing, or I'm sorry, uh, I'm used to just listening to the twos and the fours. Like, where do I stay on beat? Where are my crashes? Oh, okay, okay, twos and fours. Okay. Yeah, it, it, it's, it, I, like, I didn't pay a lot of attention to the words. I just, like, my job is to keep beat, right? Okay, um, okay, okay. And then the music starts and the lyrics start coming on the screen to to these songs that I play every fucking Sorry, every <laughs> every. <laughs> I said I would give a good goddamn if you cuss me out, but yeah, watch yourself. Every freaking. Oh, sorry, Sunday. just 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 restart from that line, please. Yep. Uh, so the the service starts that morning, and the same music that I play drums to every freaking Sunday, I start seeing the lyrics uh-huh, while uh-huh. I'm singing, and I'm like, uh, my ex wife was was next to me. I was like, hey, babe. A, um, the, these words right now, 
um, first of all, they're not in the Bible. This is not in the Bible, and it's borderline creepy. It's borderline creepy. What they're saying. <laughs> like, what, what are they talking about? And she was like, <laughs> she was like, but you play drums every Sunday. To this. <laughs> and I was like, I know, but I'm only worried about the rhythm. I'm only worried about the twos and fours. I was like, this this sounds like like some weird like Netflix documentary like horror Jesus stuff. Camp. Like, uh, so, uh, sorry, just on break this up for one second. Um, so I, so you know, I live in South Korea, and we do Jesus camps here with um, kids. At, this last, like, probably like three months ago, we went out to Pyeong, Pyeongchang, which is the, which is where they had the Winter Olympics uh, in 2018. So I did skiing for the. I'm Mexican, so I never, I never tried to ski before. You know what I mean? I'm trying to mess around with that, but uh, we had the praise team. We're trying to teach these kids English, right? But we found out that these these people are literally singing these songs and they don't know what the lyrics mean. Like, like it's a different, okay. <laughs> Let me preface that. I grew up in church and I could have quoted the Bible front ways, back ways, sideways, diagonal, and I could have sing every single one of those songs. But I would be in service many times like, what the hell are you guys singing about? I mean, you guys might as well be speaking in Chinese to me at this point. But after I became a Christian, which is, wow, in five days, it's going to be uh, seven years that I became a believer. And there were days that I would I, I would go back and find my old uh, music that we used to play from a childhood. And I would be crying my eyes out like a little baby because I recognized what those lyrics meant for the first time. And, 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 I, and I also had this empathy that I looked back and said, like, what did this person go through that compelled them to write this level uh, of music that's just crying out to God, like just just needing rescue? And that's where I was. I, I was at a point where I was I had gotten divorced. You know, I, I was I was separated at the time. But uh, after five years of divorce, I came back to South Korea and my wife got pregnant the first night I got back. I hadn't even seen her for two years. And so our daughter was actually born right in the 2018 Chung Chong Winter Olympics. So that was kind of a special time. But I totally get which I <laughs> sorry, one other thing. One other thing. I just want to tell you how this podcast. I want to tell you how this podcast was started because there was like this atheist group in my hometown. And I had joined it just to kind of see what they're doing, like on Facebook. And so one of these guys, I saw him like posting some really disrespectful things about Christianity. So they had this meeting at a pizza parlor and uh and i went there and i'm like i'm spotting him out but he's there with his wife and his and his and his daughter or his son and so we i started to start up the conversation and we had a couple of pictures of beer and a, a pepperoni pizza and by the way th this is why i'm just laughing over here when you're talking about the drinking or smoking or whatever because it's so ridiculous to me it's like when jesus creates wine and you're, this is the, it's like that shows you Jesus's priorities. Like the first miracle, he didn't wait till like five miracles later on. It's like the first miracle he's doing. And so I think it's so ridiculous that you experience that. But um, that's something we just totally relate on, you know. But anyway, as I sat down there over a few pictures of beer, I'm like, man, I don't want to debate this guy anymore. Like, I really like this guy, you know, like I really, really genuinely like, like I like you. You know, I'm sure we could go out for a beer and eat some chicken or some, some Mexican. I'm sure we'd have a great talk you know what i mean so that that's why that's why this podcast um i really hate the way that christians portray atheists like if you see a movie god's not dead and it just shows these atheists as being like arrogant and angry and you know people are doing this podcast i've realized that people are atheists for a variety of reasons and i guess i'm never going to find out what your reason is but no i'm just kidding Hopefully I will. So um, we're, we're on the same track, uh, but just so you know, this podcast got started over a few pictures of beer. I normally have an atheist co-host, but I, I really wanted to talk to you one-on-one. -on -one. You know what I'm saying? But anyway, continue. No, no, it's, it's, it's all good. Uh, yes, yeah, through all that, if, if I can uh, fast forward as much as I can. Uh, so with, yeah, with that Sunday morning, uh, listening to the lyrics of the music it was um 
oh, I don't, I don't, I don't remember that being in the Bible. And this sounds, <laughs> you know, um, uh, and then my brother, <laughs> my brother I'm sorry, I, this is just so funny because you're making observations. Uh, it's just, it's, it's hilarious. Like having an atheist make these, I find it hysterical. I'm sure some Christians would find this as being a uh, sacrilegious. I think it's hysterical, but keep going. Well, and, and I'll say this, uh, Christians that are listening, if you find this sacrilegious or offensive or uh, any, anything along those lines, I would encourage you to challenge your own um, core belief. And why do you believe what you believe? Because uh -huh. uh, especially if you're going to churches like that, where the, the even just the lyrics of the, the music don't point to don't point to scripture, mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. why, why are they doing it? Why are they doing it? If it doesn't point to scripture, why are they doing it? But uh -huh, uh -huh, I, uh -huh. I will digress. Uh, what happened no, I love next, it. I love it. I love it. I love it. Continue. What happened, what happened next? Uh, th this is uh, the, the pivot. Uh -huh. This is the pivot. So I sat down and my brother, the pastor, uh, starts his sermon. Uh -huh. And um, I, I, I don't remember the exact scriptures he shared, but he, he shared two scriptures that the two that he shared did not oppose or contradict each other, but the two that he shared did oppose or contradict other scriptures within the book. Okay. And okay. 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 And so, so, you know, he wasn't going out of his way, you know, to be contradictory. Uh, but I remember the first one he shared, I was like, whoa, 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 whoa. Everybody, everybody. And, like this is me operating in my brain. Like I'm not uh -huh, saying this. Uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. Whoa, whoa, whoa. Everybody stop. Everybody uh -huh. stop what you're doing right now. Uh -huh. Did you hear that? Did you hear what he just said? Because there's this scripture over here that says this. So so now I'm already like, ay, 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 ay. Then, then then he shares this other scripture. And again, not out loud, but in my brain, I'm like, no, 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 no. That that's not accurate. That's not accurate because this scripture over here mm -hmm. says this uh -huh. and then on the second one this like light bulb went off uh -huh. Uh -huh. and it now this is definitely me talking to me like i remember like it was yesterday and i remember telling myself austin you have never you have never sat down with this book and read it without the lenses of indoctrination, uh -huh, uh -huh, uh -huh. intoxication, uh, of influence, uh, of information, and um, uh, uh, depiction from mom and dad, youth pastor, uh -huh. pastor, uh, other ministers coming in, uh, you know, and uh, family aunt, aunts, uncles, uh, because uh, my family comes from a lineage of ministers. So okay. Okay. You okay. Have never done that. You've uh -huh. never, and that was that boom moment. Light bulb, Eureka, so, Eureka, is a Eureka, Eureka. Um, <laughs> uh, so, so be, being someone that that I, you know, I, I try to be as real as real can be. Yeah, uh, yeah, I love that. I I went to the Bible store. Uh -huh. I went to a local little Christian Bible store, and I bought me a new Bible. I bought me a new Bible and because I didn't want all the highlights and notes and uh -huh, everything, uh -huh. that, you know, that I had in my, my personal, you know, current Bible. And I began to read that book as much as I could without the influence of the indoctrination okay. and um, the uh, direction, you know, or, or intoxication from mom, dad, pastor, youth, pastor, yada, yada, yada. And when I got, to the end of Exodus and, and even Leviticus. That, mm -hmm. and, and I read the rest, but I, I got that far and I I got no answers. Mm -hmm. I, got no, I, I, I received no answers on uh, the, the way humanity was treated through those first three or four books. Uh, and then I want, we, maybe we can get it to tonight, uh, uh, the, the Gospels, but uh, there, there were so many holes. Uh, uh -huh. There were so many uh -huh. Uh -huh. Uh -huh. And, and why why we would have a good reason 
to believe that there there is a all loving, all knowing, um, all present God uh, at the root of this. Uh-huh. Uh, that is when um, there was finally a day, and, and I'll put the I'll put the cap on it on this. There there was a day uh, I was in, in my apartment downtown mm-hmm. after my divorce. I lived downtown. Wait, hold, so how how old are you at this point? Now I'm about thirty five. Wow. So wait, wait, we jumped a really big time yeah. gap in there. Like what, what was going on at that time? Wait, wait, so, so 35, what age did you get divorced? Uh, 34. So one, okay. Okay. So I, one year before. I, I, well, it, it was about the same time. My, my, um, okay. Okay. When, when I started to walk away, uh-huh, uh, from uh-huh. faith, I, I did not realize that my ex-wife was behind the scenes, uh, scheming to start a divorce uh really yeah wow wow so it was it was your ex-wife uh believer she still is yep. okay huh huh man this is a windy dang story speaking <laughs> of intoxication i'm totally intoxicated by your story i'm like a, i'm at the edge of i wish you could see me over here i'm like the edge of my seat right now so i'm fascinated this is like a, this is this would make a great movie dude this would actually make a great movie uh, really getting through Exodus and Leviticus uh-huh, uh-huh, uh, uh-huh. and then the kind of the dagger um, the dagger was two things um, and I'll save I'll save the juicy one for last uh, the, uh-huh, the uh-huh. first one was we have we have the four gospels we have Matthew Mark uh-huh. Luke and John so th- this is the these these four books in and of themselves are the linchpin, right? They 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 are what Christianity hangs on, and uh-huh, the reason uh-huh. I say that is because that is where the uh, the virgin birth, the life, the uh, crucifixion, and the resurrection of the Jesus Christ uh-huh. happens. Meanwhile, we have no contemporary evidence to support these claims none zero not none not one uh contemporary uh writer or author or anything we don't even know who wrote matthew mark luke and john um so that's that's that was my first struggle i was like mm-hmm. oh man we're crumbling we're, we're we're as as we do this we're starting to fall apart then, then we dig further into the gospels even on the uh to do with the resurrection uh-huh. Um, we can't in the four gospels, we can't even keep the resurrection story straight. Like who was there, who wasn't there, who saw it, who didn't, mm-hmm. it, uh, who was present, who wasn't present. Mm-hmm. Um, so now it's all, now, now it's all just fall, fallen, uh, apart for me. Um, so hold and, on one second, just one second of clarification. So if you're saying there's no historical records or whatever, um, this means that you're starting to go to outside the Bible. So you're starting to do additional research on that as yeah. well. Yes. Right. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Absolutely. Okay. Continue. Absolutely. continue. Uh, I mean, as, so I want to make sure I get all these details because I don't know how in the heck we jumped 14 years in your life, but we're at this moment. So I just want to make well, sure and, I understand. And, it. and I, did, I did say it earlier, I think when you go back and look at it, I, I said that there, there's a period here where I'm serving in the church, my brother's church, and I'm doing okay. Okay. these things. And then, okay. you know, fast okay. forward okay. To, okay. Uh, okay. To, that, to that point. Okay. Um, uh, but no, there, uh, there was that, and, and then, um, so, so th- th- that's based on scripture and data and, and um, things that we can or cannot back up. And then, kind of the, the final, the final punch. People can say, "Well, uh, uh, Oz, this is a, an appeal to emotion, or this is an appeal to um, uh, ignorance, or even maybe just a." Uh, like you, you want uh, 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 anecdotal. Like this uh-huh. is an anecdotal uh, uh-huh. argument. Uh-huh. I, I have a mom, uh-huh. uh, and I love my mom, and she was part of the abuse growing up. You know, or the, the too, neglect, mine too, mine yeah. too. Yeah, the, the neglect growing up, but it's still my mom, right? It, it, she brought me into this planet, um, and I love my mom. And my mom suffers from uh, Meniere's disease. And if people don't know what Meniere's disease, you can look it up. Uh, it is one of the most rare diseases known to our population. And it is a, uh, a fluid buildup between, uh, I'm sorry, behind the eardrum. And it comes wow. whenever wow. It, it happens 
anytime it wants to happen. It, 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 it surfaces anytime it wants to surface. And when that fluid builds up behind the eardrum, she could be talking, uh, Isaiah, just like you and I are right now, uh -huh, uh -huh. completely normal. And all of a sudden, uh, that, that disease hit her and she literally can't pick herself up off the floor. Like we have to carry her to bed. Um, wow. Wow. She, she can't hear her equilibrium is so wow. screwed up uh, that, that she can't move on her own, right? Yeah. And the reason, the reason I bring that up is because I know just from me, mm -hmm. I, I, I know personally, I've thrown up when, when I was a believer, hundreds, hundreds of prayers for my mom. Mm -hmm. I know my brother has sent up hundreds, hundreds Five thousands. of um, and that's, and, but, but I always try to be minimal, you know, and be honest, uh, and, 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 um, you know, and conservative, uh, but between just, just him and I, and, and the different churches that, mm -hmm, that mm -hmm, she mm -hmm. has relationship with mm -hmm. and all that, there's probably thousands, maybe a million, who, who knows? <laughs> um, Come on, now you're, I think you're over guessing at this point. Well, well no, <laughs> she has, she has inter international reach. Like she used to do, uh, Brazilian, uh, Brazilian out uh, outreach. Okay. You know, uh, okay. So, so it, it could be. I, I don't know. Um, mm -hmm. But but here's what I do know: mm -hmm. is everything the Bible teaches about prayer and how prayer works. I have watched and experienced, and now know and understand is irrelevant. It's inaccurate, and it means nothing. So. So when, when we take when we take the gospel messages and the inaccuracies mm -hmm. and, and the fact that we don't even know who the authors are, then we combine it on real life experimentation of this is how we should pray mm -hmm. and nothing happens. I have at this point in my life zero good reason to believe that there is any God, not not just the God that you may believe in, but any God. Uh, so, um, sorry. So I want to ask you a question and I'm going to let you think about it for a second. Okay. Let's say we have a pie graph of a hundred percentage points. Okay. Um, and this is going to be hard to answer. I, I'm granted this is a difficult question to answer. Try to parse this. If you have a pen, maybe I'm going to give you a minute. If you have a pen, I'd appreciate you at least try, trying to answer this as honestly as possible. Okay. Try to parse, where would you say, like, maybe it's 90% the evidence and 10% emotion. By the way, I don't discount, I don't discredit. You said it's an emotional thing. To me, that is completely valid. Um, what has surprised me beyond any reasonable, beyond any reason, I would have never thought this, like, like uh, after interviewing, at this point, maybe 20 atheists, I have seen almost 90% of the time that there is a very emotional element behind this, okay? Um, I could send you a few of them, but one of the guys from uh, the UK we're talking about that he said that you know, after he got divorced, after his parents got divorced at the age of eight, he, her, her, the, the new spouse was very abusive to him and he said he prayed and prayed and prayed at the age of eight years old and this guy would force him to spend days in bed. So I, I, I do not want to discredit your... Um, this is not meant to discredit that, just so you know. It's just a genuine question. Um, where would you parse that? Like, was, is it 10% from the Gospels? Is it 10% from the slavery? No, is it 50% from the slavery or the genocide or whatever? It seems like the guy, Black atheist, it seems like 90% comes from that issue alone, honestly. So I didn't see a lot of logic uh, when I was uh, discussing with him. And that's fine. Like, I, I don't, I'm not here to debate you. I, I'm positively not going to debate you, and I'm not going to try to convince you. I just want to know that I'm going to give you one a minute because I'm going to go make some quick coffee. Uh, I, I would say I'm either like 80, 20 or 90, 10. Um, I, I base most of my decision based on the scripture um, and, and the, the accuracy of the scripture versus just my, my personal, you know, uh, experience or involvement with my mother's experience. So 80% is based on the lack of historic, historicity. Okay. Sorry. I'm sorry to ask you this again. Okay. So let's say you're basing 80% on the scriptures. Okay. Where do you parse that as far as one, you don't believe that it actually happened or two, it's just immoral because that's kind of a contradictory thing to say, right? 
you you don't believe any of this stuff happened, but all oh, all this stuff is immoral. So where would you where did where would you break that down? Oh, I, I would still say both because even though I don't believe that, unfortunately, right. there's uh, here here in the states there the majority of our population believes it is. So I have to address both. I I, I don't just get to write one off. Okay. Okay. Fair enough. Uh, that being said, I would like to tra- tra- transition here. If you don't mind? Let's do it. Okay. So, um, okay. So I'm going to ask you another unique question. Um, well, I want to go down a rabbit hole with you. Okay. A couple, couple of them actually, by the way, I hate to keep jocking you, dude. You're absolutely amazing, bro. You're, you're in fact, I, I would say this, you're top 10, one of the most amazing people I've ever met in my life. And I've met people from all over the planet. So I'm not saying that lightly. Unless you're like free basing in the up to the side or something, and totally yeah. stuff I don't see. Like you're 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 a phenomenal person, brother. I gotta say that. I, I have to say that. It has nothing to do with trying to convert you or try to um kiss your butt. People are saying I was trying to kiss your butt. It's like, dude, I recognize someone, I recognize legit list. Le, le, I recognize someone who's legit. I think you're amazing, bro. And I do not, watch all my podcasts. See if you, I say that about anybody. No, you know I, what I mean? I, I, I do appreciate that. And I would say the same thing. If, if anybody thinks I am um, uh, pulling shade or uh, whatever, I, I have over 260 uh, episodes on our, our platform. So then, I saw that. that it's, it's all right there in front of you. Mm-hmm. <laughs> okay. So I want you to, I want you to take another minute because I do not want you to answer this question in haste. Okay. Suppose you and I got into a time machine. Okay. And we were able to take it back to Germany, uh, 1935. Okay. And you were able to say you had a translator. It's amazing. They have those little translators. You can like wear them. They'll translate for you. But let's say you're able to talk to Adolf Hitler. What argument would you try to use to persuade him not to go on to the uh, endeavors he's about to do? Okay. So I made off Hitler. I want you to talk to me for one minute. Okay. You have one minute. Adolf, I, I've heard everything uh, that you've brought to the table so far. And this is my pushback is no matter how convicted you are and no matter how deeply you believe that you're correct, Anytime we start to diminish or devalue or uh, relinquish uh, the value of human life, whether you agree with it or not, um, we're now in dangerous territory because as humans, we think we have control and we can dictate the future of fellow human beings. And just because we don't agree with them, uh, just because we don't have the same uh, religious or moral or societal values, they do, does not mean you're correct. And if you are to still continue to take this stance and move forward, uh, irregardless of the, the information that's put in, in front of you, you will in history be seen as the moral monster and the uh, the, the moral um, predator that you sound like and you you uh, appear to be right now. At the end? Yeah, I'm done. Good. I've asked that now to, I think, four eight different atheists. That's been the best um, best response. So uh, I'll have to send you a clip of the other guys at, for trying to answer it. Okay, next question. Uh, same exact scenario. This time you're going back to 1950. Um, with Kim Jong-un, Kim Jong-un's grandfather, which is Kim Il-sung, okay? So this guy, and I do want to preface this for a quick second because I went into North Korea as an atheist, okay? And when I saw like the oppression there of the first first hand of the people, it made me stop and take a step back and evaluate my worldview. Uh, There was a situation in which we were only allowed to walk on certain paths and we couldn't interact with the people. And so as I came up to, to, to this intersection, we met and we, we interacted with some uh, North Korean people and they were like deers and we were like deers in headlights, right? We're like, oh, do we go, do, we, do you go? And we couldn't walk on their path, they couldn't walk on our path, right? So next thing you know, it's some uh, soldier comes over and blows a whistle and make, makes us go. 
but I thought I walked away and I was like, holy crap, I've never seen anybody like being told where they could walk and who they could talk to like that. It, it just, it freaked me out, man. And I'm like, they're on a vacation. I'm just like, oh, like, I'm not going to be a Christian, but I know this, there's something wrong with this. And so for me, it was a big crisis of faith. This is probably maybe like seven years before I became a Christian, but it was a crisis of faith where I couldn't justify my, my thoughts on evolution and knowing beyond any reasonable doubt that this was wrong, okay? With that as a preface, I want you to ask, answer the next question. If you were to go back and meet Kim Jong-un's grandfather, Kim Il-sung, like the founder of North Korea, and you know that this guy believes he is more highly evolved than the Korean people, his subjects, and that he can use them in the same way I would use a goat or a cow you know, to shear a sheep or milk a cow or to enrich himself, what would be the argument that you would make to him? Okay. Mr. Kim, uh, everything that you've uh, put in front of, uh, uh, we'll say we're on a board or whatever, uh, everything that you've put in front of the board today would suggest that uh, for um, certain reasons that you have found yourself to be superior uh, to all of the other human beings um, around you, that you, you understand morality, um, you understand uh, the way humans should be treated and uh, whether we should be sympathetic, sympathetic or empathetic to the humans around us just based on your understanding. But then this is what happens is when we, when we start to look around the globe and we do research and we start to uh, pull on statistics and we look at the numbers and we look at the way uh, the, the other human beings and all of the other countries are treated and, and how fulfilled they are and how happy they are uh, and how free they feel in the environment that they have either grown up in or been born into. Uh, and they feel like they have uh, the adequate uh, support from, um, uh, from uh, their education, uh, you know, uh, schol you know uh, scholastics, uh, all of those things. They have on their own found happiness and joy and fulfillment. And what you're trying to to uh, assert or inject into this environment in this country is that the only way to know happiness, the only way to have fulfillment in life is how you deem it necessary. But we have statistic upon statistic. We have data upon data and we have demonstration upon demonstration that you are factually incorrect. Yay! Hold on, where's my mic? I'm gonna, okay, hold on. This is this is where you take out the mic and just drop it like that. Okay, that was bad. All right, all right. Okay, all right. Last question. Last question. Uh, this is a much shorter question. Inside of uh, a social Darwinism uh, worldview, what political system do you think more accurately represents survival of the fittest? Okay. Communism or fascism? Okay, inside inside of the realms of atheism. Do do uh, since I'm an atheist, do do I only get those two choices? Yeah, I'm just. just it doesn't mean either of those are accurate. I'm just saying those two. All right. So so uh, say it again. Uh, fascism and um, communism. Because neither. a lot a lot of communists. Oh, it's not in, it's not in either. You could say. <laughs> I could say, what would you rather get shot by um, in the head, uh, you know, uh, AK-47 or, uh, you know, a handgun? Uh, you obviously don't want to get shot by either of those, you know what I mean? But if you had to get shot by one, you're probably going to go with the handgun, right? So I'm not saying it's accurate in any sense of the word. I'm just asking your, uh, your thoughts on that one. Yeah, I, I just, th th those two, and this, this may sound weird to some people, but when I, like, like those two are so, in my understanding, so similar to, mm -hmm. to me in my understanding um to me that's not a one or the other that, that is uh it's the lesser of one or more of the other right um if if that makes sense um so, so that's, that's that's why i said that's hard for me i would assume you would obviously choose secular humanism or uh, uh democracy i get that i totally understand that okay so i'll just answer this from my own opinion that uh, uh fascism seems out of those two choices 
fascism seems more logical because fascism has a survival of the fittest master race that it's looking after. Whereas communism, it doesn't make sense that if you are a stronger person or a richer or a more intelligent person, that you would make any kind of sacrifices to take care of someone who was uh, lower down the evolutionary scale as you. So that I find it not to be entirely consistent. That being said, I just wanted to ask you this question. I'm not, I didn't want to debate those. Okay. So I do want to transition and say this. Um, one, I don't have the answers to your questions. So let's throw that off the table right now. I'm not going to be able to answer it. Probably most of those questions. My background, because I wasn't a believer for so many years, is not in biblical studies. There's a lot of stuff I don't understand. You know, and even when I went to Bible college, I was an atheist. So I could have maybe gotten the answers for some of that there, but I didn't believe in God, you know? So I tried the best as I could, um, probably about a month or so before I went back to Bible college, after dropping out the first time, um, I told my mom and she said, um, oh, great, now I have something to brag about you again. You know, even though I'd already graduated from college, um, that was the kind of pressure I was in so it wasn't even like it wasn't a genuine trying to search for God. I mean I can say I was looking but I didn't search with all my heart that being said um, I got the date tattoo 516 um, on my wrist here because I did get this one tattooed on my right hand which is a North Korean atheistic philosophy I got that tattooed on me inside of Israel symbolically on my right hand to say that I don't need God and so I had a, con yeah. a conversion to God um, uh, about four months after leaving Israel. And I had told my dad, okay, so listen to this. I told my dad never to mention the name of Jesus Christ to me again, because I finally opened up about the abuse that I, the abuse that I suffered. And he said, oh, I'm a, I want to pray for you. And I said, dad, do not ever mention the name of Jesus Christ to me. As long as we live, I want you to promise me right now, you will never mention the name of Jesus Christ to me because I always tolerated it. Because as I said, the last time I saw my mom, I told her I didn't believe in Jesus Christ. She died on my birthday four months later. So I didn't want to close off that bridge with my father, but it did. I, I, I did. Okay. So that being said, the reason why I'm telling you this is because I cannot transfer the experience that I had to do. You asked if I could, if, if you, I can make it non-falsifiable, you know, and I'm like, no, there's no way. I, I, I was an atheist. I didn't believe in God. I told my dad I did, didn't believe in God that I didn't want to ever do. And the next day, Jesus Christ spoke to me. Okay, so I don't know who would want to make something up like that. My family's called me a liar. Um, they made me get into counseling, which I benefited from. But um, it's like. If you try to tell me, for example, and I know, and I, I'm very grateful. I'm very grateful you did not go down this route because you said, and I respect you. That's respect I have for Oz. What's your last name? Mills. I can't tell you how much I appreciate you said, I'm not going to try to take your faith from you. All right. Faith has been something that's brought me from the pits of hell back to sanity, back to being a father and a husband and a wife. I, being a, a father, I'm sorry. And so it, it, it has generally changed my life. But that being said, yeah, I think if you have a conscience, you know, maybe Hitler would read the genocide and stuff and be like, oh, yeah, this is great. Yeah, I love this book, you know. Uh, maybe Kim Jong-un would read the thing about the slavery or whatever and be like, yeah, these people are doing it the right way, you know. But for me, having done the research, having written a book about it, having seen the effects of it firsthand, I approach the situation from a totally different standpoint, you know? So this is where we had, we had briefly mentioned faith and whether or not I had faith and whether or not that was a reasonable or logical thing. And I would say the same way as if, you know, you're going to say you trust, you believe that the physicists are going to one day tell you what, you know, 80, 70% of the universe is actually made out of because they don't know mm -hmm. what it's made out of. You know, like, like I've shared many, many times on the interwebs, and I have no problem saying it. Um, I'm a high school dropout. I'm mm -hmm. never the smartest guy in the room. Uh, but what I am full of is common freaking sense. Um, and I love to be rational and, and walk down uh, people's 
uh, people's progress, the, 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 the progression to yeah. that got them from one place to another. Uh, so, so I think that would be a fair, uh, a fair trade-off is sure. I think that's a great breaking point. Um, we can do that. And, and that's something on, on my channel that I talk about with people all the time, whether it's Christians, Muslims, Buddhists, yeah. uh, it doesn't matter. And it's always fun and respectful, but how, how do we get to a justified true to belief or, right. you know, mm -hmm. um, uh, what is faith? What's the definition of faith? Those kind of things. So, uh, we want to thank you so much for joining us today at RG podcast. If you're not subscribed, please sure be please be sure to do so. Um, you know, there's plenty more respectful, humility, and empathetic conversations that are going on, and this is what we need in this world today. So, with that being said, Oz, uh, want to thank you for your time. You got any last 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 thoughts? Um, yeah, I'll, I'll just say uh, whether you're a theist or an atheist, keep it civil, keep it respectful, love each other. We're all humans. Sure. We're, we're doing this thing together. Love each other. Uh, don't be afraid to challenge a belief, mm -hmm. uh, but also be willing to, uh, to the same degree, uh, love your fellow human being.